Hey y'all, how are all my beautiful friends doing? I hope y'all all have had a great week and thank you so much for clicking on today's video. If you've never seen me before and you have no clue who I am, hi, my name is Mallory and welcome to Crime Time with Mal. Over here I cover true crime, mainly unsolved and missing cases. So if that is something you'd be interested in, I would love to have you subscribe to my channel. I have the best community over here, so if you are that, if you are that community, thank you so much for all your support and all your kind words. I cannot thank y'all enough. So today's video is another missing person case about Michael Bryson. Have y'all heard about this case? Also, if you want to follow along and you have Facebook, go head over to find Michael Bryson. And that is where a lot of this information is coming from. So Michael was 27 years old at the time he went missing. And on August 3rd, 2020, Michael and his friends decided to go to Hobo Campground in Lane County, Oregon and celebrate their friend's birthday with a rave. And it was gonna be a week long camp trip. Well, two days into this camping trip at the rave, Michael disappeared, literally walked off with nothing with him and completely vanished. Before Michael headed off to his camping trip for the week, he stopped by his parents' house, Tina and Parrish in Harrisburg, Oregon. Now this soon would be a time that Tina and Parrish literally treasured because this was the last time that they spent with their son. Everyone that knew Michael said he was so caring and generous. He had a heart of gold. He loved to make people happy and laugh, and he had the biggest smile. A hobo campground is a primitive campsite, and if you don't know what that means is there is no power, there is no water, there's nothing. It's you in the woods, in the wilderness. That is it. And this rave got to be about 40 to 60 people, which is a pretty decent sized party. And of course there was loud music, drinking, substances more than likely. Some of Michael's friends said that he was hanging out on this bus that was there and he got upset about something and he just walked away. Now, this is very confusing because everything that I have found, his friends say like, some of them say they don't know what happened. Some of them say um, that he just walked away and started heading off into the woods. So that part is really unclear to me. And I, <laughs> y'all, this has been weeks that I've been digging into this case because there's not a lot out there. And what is out there is very weird to me. So not only did he walk away and his friends had no idea what direction he went into, but he also did not take anything with him. He didn't take his backpack like his clothes. His phone was dead or powered off. His phone was powered off. And he hasn't touched his bank account since then. I find that strange that if some friends of his thought he was upset and he just walked off into the woods, why nobody went after him and why nobody seems to understand which direction he went. Tina and Parrish didn't even find out about their son's disappearance until the next day, August 6th, around 5 p.m. that evening. They immediately drove to the area that Lane County Sheriff's Department Search and Rescue had sent some teams down to search the land and the water. But Tina said that by the time that they got there, that 12 hours had already been passed since he had disappeared. Now, my heart broke, y'all, when she said this as a mother. She said that when she got to the area and she stepped her foot out of the car and placed it on the ground, she immediately knew that Michael was gone. She said people weren't looking for him, that they were just sitting around eating, drinking, laughing. But she just felt in her gut that something happened. Oh, my heart breaks for them. Now, some people say that Michael walked away, but some people also say that a group of people picked Michael up off the side of the road. Hundreds of volunteers came out in the area to search for Michael. Helicopters, drones were in the area, Everybody was searching for 19 days straight. 
Now this area is extremely dense. There's overgrown trees and bushes and deep areas. I mean, it's the woods, it's a campground. It's a primitive campground. And there was literally no sign of Michael. And Parrish said that he never got a straight answer from the people at the park, which has got to be so frustrating. He actually believes that some people know more than what they lead on to believe because there's just a bunch of inconsistencies in the people's stories. Now, to my knowledge and my research, I saw that Michael has just recently, as of the party, had overcame a substance abuse problem and he was getting his life back together he was doing good before can't say that on youtube he was working at a bar and grill and very interested to go to school to study to become an electrician michael has always had a huge passion for music and he would actually dj's dj at parties and raves all across oregon now that honestly concerns me um from a recovering addict to be placed in that type of environment especially when you're like fresh freshly sober. But Tina and Parrish said that even in Michael's toughest times that he would always reach out to them. Tina and Parrish were searching for their son three to four times a week, putting out missing flyer posters, investigating tips. We definitely will never stop looking. Parked here, um, that's where the, the large bus was. Walked off the bus and nobody has seen him. By the time we found out, it was almost 12 hours after he had been missing. The moment I put my foot out of that car, I knew Michael was gone. People weren't out looking for Michael. They were sitting around um, drinking, eating, laughing. Nobody was really out searching for him. So there's been a lot of conflicting stories from, from the very beginning. One story is um, that he uh, walked away from camp. And then the other story is that uh, a group of individuals picked him up on the road. The tips that come in support both of these theories. The term where they give you excess amounts of, of acid um, to basically overdose you. Somebody doses you. They dose you more than what you should have. Then on December 11th, 2020, a breakthrough in the case came. Parrish got a call from a person who saw something off of Bryce Creek Road just west of Hobo Campground between Cedar Creek Campground and Lund Park Campground. Lane County Search and Rescue were notified and when they arrived, they found some belongings of Michael's that he was last seen wearing. And what's odd about this is they searched this area. This is like a little swimming hole that's right by the road. It's very visible from the road. And Parrish believes they were planted there because they, it was searched. I mean, how could they have missed it? There's just so many unanswered questions that this family is looking for and that they deserve to have. I, I just don't understand this case. What do y'all think about it? Do you think he, you know, relapsed and was on substances and just wandered off? Do you believe something else happened? What are your thoughts and opinions? I would love to hear. We can be respectful, have a discussion, but please I just be respectful. You wouldn't want to see any mean comments or anything about your loved one. So please do the same thing. I can see both sides, honestly. I just do think it's weird that there was a tip that led to this road and it just so happened that Michael's stuff was there after they had already searched it. That to me is very weird. And the fact that the friend's stories don't line up unless they were all just really messed up and don't remember, I mean, why not say that? Hey, it was a long night and I just don't remember, honestly. But just to, I don't know, something just doesn't seem right in my opinion. So if you are not done watching my videos, I would love to have you stay till the end. There will be an in-screen pop-up with a playlist and a suggested video for you that you will more than likely enjoy. And if you are not subscribed, I would love to have you join this amazing community. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate each and every single one of you. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and hit that bell notification so you get notified whenever I go live or whenever I upload a video. And thank you so, so, so very much for all your support and kind words. Y'all truly mean the world to me. And <laughs> Taylor, if you're watching this, do you like my elbows? <laughs> she said in my live, 
that this looked like my elbows, my shoulders. Hello. Y'all know words are hard for me. So uh, yeah, my shoulders. It really does look like my shoulders. Anyway, I love y'all. Please be safe and stay where your surroundings and I will see you in next week's video. Bye y'all.